Hi and welcome to this technical module by Roblox Academy. Uh, this is a brief guide on analog versus IPCCTV. So if you're looking at purchasing a CCTV system or would just like to learn a little bit more, um, please follow on. So we're going to begin with uh, some misconceptions about uh, both standards. Um, and that is that both systems, both analog and IP, will allow you to remotely monitor your system on a smartphone. They both record on a digital hard drive and they can both produce up to 4K 1080p high definition images. And if we begin with an overview, analog CCTV is like having an eye connected to a recorder. That is, it only provides visuals and hence it's an analog scent, usually via a coaxial cable uh, known as an RG59, which we'll discuss a bit later. And that gets plugged into what's known as a DVR or a digital video recorder. And you can see at the back of this illustration, we have the standard BNC connectors. And on the left hand side, you can see an RJ45 connector and that would be for your broadband router in order for you to be able to watch the cameras on your mobile phone. Now this is a, 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 a simple way to understand IPCCTV and how it differs from analog. Now in addition to having visuals recorded, think of an IP camera as a brain. It's an eye plus a brain and it's sending a digital signal back to the recording box. So if you can imagine, it's actually sending zeros and ones. You've got information being sent rather than an analog signal. Now what that means is the brain can do extra work for you. Um, so for example, in more complex systems where you're trying to record number plates, only an IP system would allow you to actually extract that data. Um, whereas an analog camera, although it might be able to see um, a picture or a number plate, it would not be able to extract that data the way an IP system. And an IP system, sorry, an IP camera would plug into a, a recorder known as a network video recorder or NVR. You can see on the illustration on the bottom right hand side that you've got an RJ45 connectors which you might be used to on your laptops and PCs because um, that's how the cameras interface with the recorder. Now if we compare the resolution both systems can actually do 8 megapixel which is a 4k high definition and uh, we get a lot of questions from people who think analog is restricted to non-HD, which is not true. Um, analog can actually go up to 8 megapixel, which is a 4K resolution. And the type of signals you might hear of are HD TVI, HD CVI, and AHD. Now, these are the protocols that are used to send a high definition signal over a cable. Now, with an IP system, you can actually go beyond there are there's a company in in there's a companies making cameras going up to 30 and 30 megapixel and beyond so if you're looking for very high in resolution well 30 megapixel is something you'd might see in a casino or a military base it's perhaps not something you need to worry about if it's for a uh, domestic installation but it's worthwhile knowing this if we jump onto the cable Analog CCTV uses coaxial cable, which is actually a traditional type of cable used in the CCTV industry. Uh, you might recognize this connector. It's known as a BNC connector. And you'll also hear of a DC connector, which is the power connector the camera would often have. Now, other names for the coaxial cable is RG59 and power or Siamese and shotgun cable. Now the reason it's called Siamese or shotgun is because you've got two cables joined together. Worthwhile noting there is a 
distance limitation on this cable of about 50 meters and that's due to the power signal. You can actually run the video um, around 150 meters but then you would have to power the camera locally. If we jump onto IP systems, IP systems use a Cat5e or a Cat6 cable which is usually an UTP which is unshielded twisted pair and you'll know in larger buildings you will already see this uh, type of infrastructure used for the networking uh, of computer systems. So it uses the same type of cable and the connector is known as an RJ45. You don't usually have a power connector separate because the RJ45 carries power and that's known as power over Ethernet and you can actually get systems now that can go um, up to about 250 meters. That means you can run a 250 meter Cat5e cable and plug a camera all the way back to the NVR over that single cable whereas analog CCTV would, would not allow you to do that unless you start powering locally. That means having a local plug next to the camera. Let's jump on to the features. Now with analog CCTV on a single recorder you can have about 32 cameras. Now if you remember just on the first slide we were talking about the cameras being like eyes. That's exactly what it's like and so you're a bit limited in terms of the smart features uh, that you can integrate with that system. That being said most people only need to watch their recording in a decent resolution, in a high definition resolution and have uh, mobile phone access and some of the more basic features. So this, an analog system, is usually sufficient for most applications. IP CCTV uh, is a lot more scalable and we're going to show you a little diagram in a bit to show you what that looks like in a physical installation but a single network video recorder can go up to 256 cameras um, an IP system is a lot more flexible and again we're going to show you that in this little uh, uh, diagram um, now the smart features you do actually have a lot more smart features compared to analog there's a little mistake there that should actually say um, advanced smart features um, so for example you know, let's say you wanted to record number plates, well an IP system would allow you to do that. Um, or let's say you wanted to integrate your cameras with a home automation system, that would also allow you to do that. Whereas an analog system is kind of restricted. And again, this goes back to the IP camera being an eye plus a brain. Um, they're, they're like smart devices, you can call them. And so you'll see um, some of the larger companies like Google Nest and um, uh, Rings Camera and there are the various other brands like that they are generally all IP cameras which would interface with your broadband router whereas an analog system would require if you can imagine an eye um, being plugged back into a recorder. Now just to, just to show you um, give you a sort of installation diagram I guess um, when you're scaling up with an analog system you are restricted in the sense that your cabling can start to get a little bit messy and that's because each camera requires a uh, video signal going back to the recorder. So in this example where you've got a second building imagine you wanted everything controlled on one recorder you would have to run back 16 cameras all the way back to your recorder. If you compare that to an IP system because it's based on networks which are addressable you could essentially have one cable go into a second building um, you could then fit a IP switch and from there you could add your 16 cameras now you can imagine doing much larger installations let's say in schools or casinos and um, larger public buildings where IP systems would make more sense than analog now let's go into the benefits um, I seem to have been bashing analog CCTV quite a bit but it's not true. There's uh, There are a lot of advantages that analog CCTV has. One of them is very low maintenance. And that's because the cameras are, to some degree, uh, a lot more simpler than IP. They don't have complex 
um, brains ticking and IP signals. So your technical knowledge required for installation is a lot simpler than IP systems. Um, generally you'll find some of the more cheaper systems are analog CCTV and the other thing is if you can imagine you've already got a system that you want to upgrade to high definition if you have existing cabling like coaxial or shotgun cabling then it would make more sense to utilize the existing cabling and upgrade to high definition rather than running new wiring uh, the other advantages you have are there is actually a new system known as power over coax that means you would not need to run the shotgun cable you can run a single video cable so have a look out for POC um, which is uh, it's been around for actually a very long time but we're seeing it creep back up and that's because the manufacturers have found a way to send high definition signals over a single cable and the other advantage there is you can run up to 200 meters so that where previously you were restricted on power up to about 50 meters you can now run up to 200 meters um, the other advantage with analog systems is a lot of the recorders now they do have hybrid features which actually allow you to add IP cameras at a later date if you require let's go on to IP CCTV so it works with existing Cat5 e wiring if that's what your office or, or school has. Um, it's a lot more scalable as we showed in the previous diagram. That means you can add and take away cameras uh, without having to rewire much. You can just use the network infrastructure to do that. Um, you've got home automation integration. So for example, let's say you've got a, uh, a control for or a restaurant system. You could use IP cameras and integrate them into your single smart device. Um, there are a lot more smart features on IP CCTV. It's a lot more flexible, but it does require a little more technical knowledge. Now, I'm pretty sure any of you who are searching, you will find uh, plug and play systems, and that's very well. But if you are looking to um, deploy more advanced systems, you are required to have a little bit of more, uh, a little bit more technical knowledge compared to analog CCTV. Now. We're going to give you a, a little example of a like-for-like -like comparison. Um, so if you have a look at this, these visuals, you can see um, left and right, uh, left we've got an analog system and right we've got an IP system. Now we've chosen the same camera model for this. Uh, they're both 8 megapixel at 4K resolution. And on the left hand side you've got um, the analog system which if you can imagine is like having an eye. Now the eye can see the number plate uh, as you can see from the the image there without a problem but on the right hand side you've got an IP system which is like an eye plus a brain. Now what's the difference? The IP system because of its uh, digital capture allows the footage to be interpreted and the data extracted. Now that means you could essentially extract a list of all the number plates that um, uh, on, on let's say a gate or a barrier and actually give you a full log whereas an analog system would not allow you to do that. Although you could play back the footage and perhaps see the number plate you wouldn't be able to extract the data out of it. Um, now the other thing IP cameras will tend to have, these types of IP cameras anyway, is a, a relay um, connection which you could plug into your barrier or let's say a siren to automatically trigger. So any of you who go to the airport you'll notice as, you've, um, as, you, as you enter the airport car park you will usually have your number plate captured by an IP camera and uh, on your way out that's usually connected to your gate system which allows the gate to open and that's because it's actually it's extracting the data from the image that it's seeing and that's one of the main differences between an analog and IP camera. Now uh, final question is which one do you want to go for? Which one is the right system for you? I guess the first thing is it depends on is are you using it for a home or a business? And uh, just a few questions to ask yourself is the first is um, what types or what type of security needs do you require 
because both systems are good enough for um, high definition security and if you just want to keep an eye on your premises and you know you want to have the functionality to watch on your phone at your convenience well both systems can can do that um, if you're looking to deploy a system which already has cabling in place then it's worthwhile investigating what cabling you have because if it's coaxial and power it might save you a lot more money upgrading that system to a high definition analog system versus pulling that all out and having to rewire it and vice versa if you already have cat 5 e um, ethernet cable in place then you might want to look at using that to up to basically um, put on an IP system on the existing infrastructure um, thirdly what's your budget um, generally analog systems are cheaper than the IP systems and if you're on a budget then an analog system might make sense what sort of features are you looking for do you require number plate capturing or home automation integration or any other smart features in which case you might want to start looking at an IP system um, are you looking to fit this yourself is this a DIY project if so have a look at both options um, most of the time if you if you're getting a, a good deal I guess that's going to be one of your major factors um, but you might want to run that past some of the features above just to make sure you're not missing out on anything uh, and finally um, are you looking to future proof your system do you think your security requirements are going to be, exceed in about a couple of years in which case do you want to start um, uh, well do you want to invest in a system that will allow that future expansion and uh, just on that note um, if you are looking for let's say a four camera system it's always 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 worthwhile going for a slightly bigger recorder let's say an eight channel and that's because in the future let's say you moved house or in a business let's say you move business and you wanted to add extra cameras you're not then having to spend an extra couple of hundred pounds or uh, a couple of hundred dollars on a new recorder you'll have the capacity to add that so it's all worthwhile um, thinking about the future when you're looking at a system thank you for watching this is a video by Robox Academy if you do have any questions um, please leave it in the comment section below and if you would like to see any future videos from Robox Academy please let us know and we'll do our best to um, to accommodate thank you